Seven woes. Matthew chapter 23. Go there with me. Seven woes. What is a woe? Condemnation. It's a condemnation. You get the woe and the wheel. The wheel you will find in chapter, uh, 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 Matthew chapter 5 onwards, meaning blessed. A wheel. You pronounce a blessing. Number six. Number six gives us the blessing. The benediction. So when you, when you give a wheel, you bless those in the name of Jesus. Shalom. Whatever. But here we have woes. Woes to the scribes and the Pharisees. Seven woes pronounced by Jesus for leading people astray in tradition. I'm saying all of this because I cannot get to the part where we're all one body, 1 Corinthians 12, and we've all got one gift. That means absolutely nothing if we don't realize we, we, if, if we're caught up in traditionalism. If you're caught up into, oh, this is what I do on a Sunday, that's it, no more, then you're a traditionalist. I might as well not even read 1 Corinthians 12 to you. Seven woes pronounced. Matthew chapter 23. Write it down and I'll read it to you anyway. The first word is verse 13, verse 15, verse 16, verse 23, verse 25, verse 27, verse 29. The first woe from verse 13. This is the loving Jesus who's come to die for the sins of the world, but he's come to die, as Isaiah 53 tells us, to break, to set the prisoner free. The prisoner who is not just imprisoned in the, in, 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 in the, in the shackles of death and sin, but imprisoned in traditionalism. He's come to break that. And this is the meek and mild Jesus who, is, who seems to be... People say he's a friend of sinners, but we don't realize that when he comes to sinners, those sinners are changed in an instant. And I think of Zacchaeus. When he came down, Zacchaeus, come down, for today the kingdom has come to your house. And he goes into Zacchaeus' house. You know, the very first thing that comes out of Zacchaeus' mouth, I will give back to those who I have stolen. Four times. Four times the amount, because he was in the presence of holiness. He was in the presence of the Redeemer and the Savior, Jesus Christ, who was a friend of sinners to change sinners, to break them from the shackles of traditionalism. And traditionalism was also ripping off your own people. And the people were just, well, what can I do? What can I do? There's nothing I can do. Just sign my house off. And Jesus came to break that. And he broke it in such a way he spells out seven condemnations with such veracity and such vehemence, with such deepness. Because how mad he is at Satan. Because these people were agents, agents of Satan. Mouthpieces of Satan. Actually the minions of Satan. The scribes and the Pharisees. And they were doing the works of Satan. And Jesus had enough had enough. And as I told you, he had so much, had enough to such an extent, he says, thus far, no further. And he withdraw himself, withdraws himself from the world. Is this the Jesus, I'm asking you honestly, is this the Jesus you know? Or you think you know? I'll tell you no. I'll tell you no. That lady who put the two copper it's true that we can actually make a, 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 an example out of her. That if she could put her two copper coins in, why aren't people giving in the church? We could use that justifiably as an example. But the actual example is an example of condemnation. She was caught up in traditionalism. She was just doing what she was doing. Although her heart was right, her heart was right in the law, but she was doing it for the sake because if she didn't do it, she would be in trouble. She would be in deep, deep trouble. And this is the churches of today. These are them. Seven ways, verse 13. Let's take it from verse 12. Whoever exalts himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself will be exalted. But woe, be condemnation, be absolute damnation to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. 
For you shut the kingdom of heaven into people's faces. Listen. You shut the kingdom of heaven into people's faces. You do not allow them to see what they should really be seeing. You're shutting it before them because of you, you, you hypocrites. You're leading them astray. You be damned. Now I want to tell you, beware. Back to Mark. Beware of the scribes. Beware of the ministers. Beware of the pastors. Beware of the dwemenies. Beware of the priests. Beware. Because you shut the kingdom of God in their faces. Verse 15. Again, all condemnation. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you travel across sea and land to make a single proselyte, to make a single convert in modern English. And when he becomes a convert, you make him twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. Jesus is actually saying you are actually representatives and you are agents of hell. And you go across and you try and convert someone into your traditional church system you're making them twice the sun the agent of hell than you are because they are going to grow up and they're going to become a mouthpiece even stronger for you than you are because you've led them astray beware of what you hear behind the pulpits beware woe number three verse 16 woe to you blind gods woe be damned be condemned to you blind gods who say, if anyone swears by the temple, it is nothing. But if anyone swears by the gold of the temple, he is bound to his oath. What? You guys look at me skewed and say, is that happening in churches? I'm telling you it is. I'm telling you it's happening in churches. We've made God's house into a den of robbers. 23. This is the fourth woe. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. Did you just see the word Hippocrates coming up every single time? Hypocrite. It's not just the case of a two-faced person. Let's just bring it, let's say what it really means. You're actually an agent of Satan playing an angel, agent of light. You belong wholeheartedly to Satan. But you're acting out an agent of light. And people believe it. Hypocrite. For you tithe mint and dull and cumin and have, no, uh, and have neglected the weightier matters of the law. Justice and mercy and faithfulness. That's what he seeks is justice, mercy and faithfulness. That's what the Psalms spell out over and over and over. Justice, mercy, and faithfulness. That's what the book of Amos, the minor prophet Amos says. This is lacking. Away with your offerings. They stink. Away with your music. They stink. You have neglected justice and mercy and faithfulness. You have led people astray. You blind gods. Verse 24, straining out a gnat and swallowing up a camel. Verse 25, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you clean the outside of the cup and the plate, but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence. You blind Pharisee, first clean the inside of the cup and the plate, that the outside also may be clean. Verse 27, again, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly appear beautiful. What are you talking about? Here they're robes. Beautiful white robes with these absolutely enormous, beautiful tassels on the ends of these robes. They were stunning to look at. When you saw the Pharisee coming, people were at, just, they knew this is the man of God, Rabbi. By the way, just so that you know, Rabbis sometimes even esteem them to the, to the level of Father. You are directly equal to God. You're an agent right from God. Rabbi. That's how people saw the Pharisees. Guess what? That's how the Antiochians see their Dominies. That's how the Catholics see their priests. How they dress. This is a man of God. 
That's why no one calls me pastor. I'm glad. Call me Shane. That's my birth name. You don't have to call me pastor. Just Shane standing here. I don't need a title. Verse 29. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, for you build the tombs of prophets and des um, and decorate the monuments of the righteous, saying, if we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in the shedding of the blood of the prophets. You killed the prophets. Woe to you. And that's the seventh one. And then comes a lament in verse 37. Listen to this. This is a lament. Anyone know what's lament? Lamentations? A, a mourning? A cry? You're lamenting. You're sorrowful. You're, you're actually sorry. That what is going to come is going to be horrendous. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, verse 37. The city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I gathered you children together as, hen, as a hen gathers her brood under her wings and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. For I tell you, you will not see me again until you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Didn't that happen? Matthew 16, very quickly. Just what is church meant to be? Let's pick it up from Matthew 16. Let's take it from verse 13 of chapter 16 so you can get some context. And by the way, if you go to the beginning of Matthew chapter 16, it opens once again with these just always there, just, you know, looming in the back shadows are the scribes and Pharisees because it opens up with chapter 16 as, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to test him. They're just there, ubiquitous. They're always there. They don't like what he's doing. He is freeing people from the shackles of traditionalism and he is setting free people for the kingdom of heaven and they're just there to test him to make sure to try and trip him up and by the way he thwarted every single one of them every single one of them and at his time as the bible tells us he gave himself up he gave himself up he gave himself up even unto death was his choice. They couldn't thwart him. Verse 13, Now when Jesus came to the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others say Jeremiah, or one or of the prophets. He said to them, But what, who do you say that I am? Now listen to this. Simeon Peter replied, or Simon Peter, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I tell you, Peter, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. On this rock, that, that, just that confession, who are you? You are the Christ. The son of the living God, implying, and Peter knew exactly what he's talking about. The one who was and is and still is to come. The one who has come to take away the sins of the world, as John the Baptist says. Behold, the Lamb of God, who comes to take away the sins of the world. Peter repeats the very same thing, and, and Jesus said, you know what? I never told you that. Your, our Father, your Father in heaven, God has shown you that. On that rock, just on that confession, that exact confession that I want to hear from the church. That's Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And we can just put a, a little ellipsis into there and say, the one who has come to take away the sins and the shackles of the world from traditionalism. Gee, this ties up. Hey, we can con people so easily. People are so gullible. You can be conned so quickly. Do you know how many people I have heard of and I know of who have actually over TBN ordered supernatural anointing oil all the way from Israel? Sup supernatural. If you give your gift today and we will send you, if you give your $100 today, we will send you a supernatural anointing oil from virgin olives all the way from Israel. And la, 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 la. And whoever you touch in Jesus' name will be free. I know people have bought that. So gullible. 
so gullible. But you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. No one has showed you that except my Father in heaven. And may I bring this to a close? The book of John again reminds me, no one comes to me unless the Father draws him to me. So if the Father in heaven doesn't show you the Christ, you cannot come to the Christ. And therefore you cannot belong to the Christ. And therefore you cannot be filled with the Spirit of Christ. And therefore you cannot understand. Like the, world, the Word says, the world cannot perceive the, the words of Christ. They are foolishness, says the uh, book of Corinthians to them. Utter foolishness. 